Hello everyone. In this video, we're solving an equation with four variables in two different ways. If you like the video, please comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, let me know why in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Let's get started. Okay. Now we do have an equation in fourth degree, which you could call a cortic, and we have four variables, but we only have one equation. So we have to solve this equation in a very special way. And I'm gonna show you two methods to solve it. Of course, first one is my favorite all the time because it's an algebraic method. We're gonna be doing some manipulations with this equation uh, so we can solve it. Okay, all right, so let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is basically, I would like to get everything on the same side so that I can get a zero from here. So it's gonna look like x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus w to the fourth minus 4x y z w is equal to zero. Now, at this point, it, this equation doesn't really make much sense because we have the fourth power and then we have the product, so on and so forth. But we're gonna be able to manipulate this in such a way that we can actually solve it. And that method is fairly interesting. So stay tuned, let's see what happens. And then after I'm done with the first method, I'm gonna show you the second method. Okay, let's see. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to use uh, squares here. Um, and my goal is basically to complete the squares, but how do we do that? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to pick two terms, like x to the fourth and y to the fourth, and then I'm going to be adding, subtracting something so that I can make it a perfect square. So here's how we go. Okay, I'm going to do x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. From this one, I'm going to subtract two x squared y squared, okay? And then I'll be doing something similar for z to the fourth and w to the fourth. So I'll be subtracting 2z squared w squared, obviously. Whatever you subtract, you have to add, right? So let's go ahead and add those quantities so that we're balanced. We'll be adding 2x squared y squared plus 2z squared w squared. And then, of course, at the end, we have the 4 minus 4xyz w term, right? And the whole thing is equal to zero. Awesome. Now, what are we gonna do next? Well, after doing this, obviously, we're gonna get something nice, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it, right? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to split this into groups. Let me show you how. So this is gonna be my first group, this is gonna be my second group, and this is going to be my third group. And for each group, I'm going to write something meaningful. So, the first one is x squared minus y squared squared. The second one is z squared minus w squared squared. Now the third one is not that obvious unless, unless you get to see that we can actually take out a 2 here and then inside we're going to have x squared y squared and let me put that guy in the middle so hopefully that'll make more sense when I do, right? Okay. Now what does this look like to you? Well this is supposed to be a perfect square too and it actually is, because if you look at it very carefully, you'll notice that this is xy minus zw quantity squared. So here's how we proceed. We get x squared minus y squared squared plus z squared minus w squared squared plus two times the quantity xy minus zw quantity squared. And all of that is equal to zero. Okay, isn't that beautiful? Now we got the zero on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side, we got something real nice because now this is actually a sum of squares. And as you know, we're looking for real solutions. And I guess I forgot to mention at the beginning that x, y, z, w are positive, okay? They're all positive. And of course, they can be zero too, so we could probably say that greater or equal to zero. Zero, 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 zero will definitely work, right? But we're gonna get more than that. Okay, anyways, so, what are we gonna do with this? Well, we said that this is a sum of squares, so if the sum of squares in the real world is zero, then every quantity must be zero because you can't get a zero by adding a positive and a negative because no square will be negative. So this implies that x squared minus y squared is equal to zero, z squared minus w squared is equal to zero, and xy minus zw is equal to zero. Okay, now what does this imply? Since x, y, z, w are all positive, from here we can safely say that x squared equals y squared, which implies x equals y because they're both positive, 
And then from here, similarly, we get z squared is w squared, which means z is equal to w. And from the third one, we get something interesting, which says x, y is equal to z, w. Now let's explore what that means a little further. Now, we know that x can be replaced with y and z can be replaced with w. So if you go ahead and do that, for example, replace the x with y here, you'll get y squared. And then replace the z with w here, you'll get w squared, which is going to imply that y is equal to w. But we already knew that z is equal to w, which means that x is equal to y, y is equal to z, z is equal to w, which means that they're all equal, right? x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to w. Awesome. Well, if they're all equal, what can I do? Well, what I can do is I can actually go ahead and replace everything with x in the equation, right? And then obviously whatever I get from there is going to be a generic solution. So let's go ahead and do that. Everything uh, turn into x, you're going to get x to the fourth plus x to the fourth plus x to the fourth plus x to the fourth. Remember our equation was x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus w to the fourth equals 4xyzw. So it's going to be 4x and that's going to be what? 4 to the power 4, right? Okay, so basically what this means is that you get an identity, right? So uh, what this implies is that this is always true if they're equal, which basically means that uh, the solution set is actually going to be, the, the solution set is actually going to be uh, ordered quadruples such as it's just x, 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 such that x is a real number. Of course, it needs to be a positive real number, right? And plus zero, of course. So I will just add the zero there like this, and this is going to give me my solution set, okay? All right, so in other words, one, 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 one is a solution, five, 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 five is a solution, root two, root two, root two, root two is another solution. And you can definitely check that out. Awesome, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. And our second method is actually different from the first method uh, because it uses inequalities, which is fairly interesting, don't you think? Okay, all right, let's see how that works. Well, we do have something called AMGM inequality. And how does that work? Well, it says that for positive real numbers or non-negative real numbers, of course, this is true for zero as well, we can safely say that the arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean. And when do we get equality? When all the terms are equal, obviously the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean are going to be equal. So that implies uh, the other one uh, both ways. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So our terms are going to be here x to the fourth, y to the fourth, z to the fourth, and w to the fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and take their arithmetic mean. So I'm going to go ahead and add them up and divide by four. This is going to be the arithmetic mean, which is known as average. And of course, this is supposed to be greater than or equal to the geometric mean, which is the fourth power of x to the fourth, y to the fourth, z to the fourth, and w to the fourth. And what this means is that we can actually simplify this. This is the absolute value of x, y, z, w, but since x, y, z, w are all non-negative, I can safely say that this implies, this implies that this quantity is greater or equal to the product x, y, z, w. Now, does this look familiar? And does that have anything to do with that equation? It absolutely does, because at this point, you can think of it as basically uh, this inequality turns into an equation when x, y, z, w are all equal. So in other words, this is true. This is true when x, y, z, w are equal, okay? Which means that this is our equation, right? If you go ahead and cross multiply, you'll get x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus w to the fourth is equal to 4xyzw, which gives us our original equation, which means that if they're all equal, then this equation is satisfied. Therefore, we get the same solutions. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.